Hi everybody in Crystal Clear Ministries. Happy Monday to you guys. I hope that you guys are having a great start to your week. I just wanted to pop on here and share with you some things that the Holy Spirit is working on me with. And um, I just thought that today as I was getting ready to go into week two of this book that I was telling you guys about, it's called Raised to Stay. And it's by Natalie Runyon, um, Reunion Runyon. Um, and basically it's for, it's a great book for the body of Christ because we've all suffered church hurt. We've all been disappointed at some point or disillusioned at some point with the church, with the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. And, um, so I've been going through this book and I'm in chapter two and you notice on the cover here, hi Andrea, she has these broken glass, you know, in churches they usually have the stained glass windows, which is a bunch of broken pieces of glass put together fitted together that creates a beautiful masterpiece right and in essence what she was saying in this chapter is that we are all stained glass windows we are the stained glass windows of the church because we all have brokenness we all have dysfunction we all have issues and areas of our life um, that are hard you know trauma or we've suffered abuse in out of the church doesn't matter just in life in general the enemy comes for us right and we go through things that cause us to to break, that cause us to lose identity. Um, and sometimes the image that the church has given off in the past, and maybe even still, is that when you become a Christian, that automatically means perfection. That means that overnight, as soon as I believe in Jesus Christ, that all of a sudden I'm whole, I'm healed, I'm fixed, and I'm perfect. Now we are perfected in him. It's his perfection that's imputed to us, his righteousness that's imputed to us. And so I wanted to share with you because one of the questions she asked is, where are you? Where are you with healing, right? Where are you with um, kind of coming full circle with the body of Christ? Because the truth of the matter is the body of Christ, the bride of Christ is dearly and deeply loved by Jesus. And even though I, I used to, I think I just had a wrong vision of the church coming up in the church that the church was supposed to be full of perfect people that never fall never make a mistake never will hurt you disappoint you let you down i i don't know why i thought this <laughs> um but that was kind of like my mindset was that the church should be the last place i ever get hurt but god has recently been showing me that the church is full of broken people the church is full of hurt people who are in the process of discipleship and uh, consecration who are hurt people becoming healed broken people who are getting set back into pl back into place right so the church is not full of perfect people the church is not full of people who have it all together the church are full of people who have rendered their lives unto the Lord and said I realize I have a problem and that Jesus is the solution right and so that's what I had to realize is that the church is going to be imperfectly perfect okay the church is going to be as perfect as i am okay which i'm not so because we are the living church the organism but i'm talking about the local organizations that when we as the organism come together to fellowship it is off thinking to believe that that local congregation is going to be without flaw without imperfection without brokenness um, because it is full of people. And so I've always heard it said, as soon as you show up to the church, the church is imperfect, <laughs> right? The church is flawed. The church is broken because you bring all of who you are to that local congregation. But it's within that congregation through fellowship that we are supposed to edify and lovingly correct and lift up each other unto righteousness, right? Uh, to walk in that righteousness that's been imputed to us to encourage each other to remain in the faith. Um, and that's the point of the fellowship is that we would sharpen one another to maturity, to unity in Christ, to coming into the full, fuller knowledge of who Jesus Christ is individually and then also collectively. So I just wanted to read you my thoughts. I don't know if this book interests you at all, um, but it's called Raised to Stay. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on her on Instagram and also on Facebook. If you would like information on this, I can send you the links. Um, it, and there's also a 12-week course that goes with each chapter of the book. Um, and it's, I, would, I, I am loving it so far because I was very disillusioned by the church. 
Um, and it was nobody's fault. I'm talking about the church collectively. I'm talking about Western Christianity. Um, I, I got disillusioned and I began as a process of deconstruction, which she talks about. Deconstruction is healthy. It's it's not unhealthy to deconstruct what you believe, meaning to break it down and under like, why do I believe that? Is that really what God says? Is that, you know, it's, it's okay to deconstruct. But if you're not a part of a structure or a family that can help you take the deconstruction and rebuild truth, right? And um, Lisa Brevere says in the forward of this book that deconstruction without reconstruction isn't deconstruction at all. It's destruction of your faith. And so what often happens when people hit this place of really wanting to go from blind faith to educated faith, they they get really turned off by all the denominations and all of the various doctrines and just the carnality that finds itself in the church sometimes and they wind up leaving God altogether. They wind up leaving Jesus altogether. Not just the body, but Jesus altogether. And I understand because I almost did the same thing. Um, but thankfully God is faithful to finish what he starts in us, right? But if we are in the hand of fellowship within a family, then uh, that I believe that process you won't fall so far away because you have people there who've been through it. And I think that's why it needs to be talked about. I think deconstruction of faith needs to be talked about because many of us believers come to that crossroads of why am I doing this? Like, what is the point? Who is Jesus really? What is this church thing really about? How is it all connected? And we go from just kind of being okay with empty religion, religious practices to, I really want to know who Jesus is. And I feel like it's not talked about a lot because I do think that there is a misnomer in the church that we are to be perfect. And that's why a lot of people look at the church and say, oh, those hypocrites. Well, yeah, the church is full of hypocrites because we're learning how to not be hypocritical. <laughs> we're learning how to walk with the Holy Spirit. We're learning how to renew our minds. We're learning how to be obedient. And these are new behaviors for us because we're coming out of a world that said you can do any and everything you want whenever you want into a relationship with Jesus where we're understanding that those things may not be fruitful, but yet because we're in this flesh, we still have a very strong desire for it. And we have to let the Holy Spirit do his work in us individually, but also through fellowship where we receive, you know, encouragement and correction and edification and all of those things so that we can have a change of heart and have a repentant spirit that we understand and we lose our taste for those things instead of just stopping doing those things out of moral obligation, but we actually have a change of heart, right? And so I just wanted to share my thoughts with you um, on the second chapter of this called uh, Stained Glass Windows. And she said, where are you in your process of healing? And so for me, I put um, uh, a couple of things. Well, first I wanted to share, she talked about consumer Christian consumer Christianity versus servitude Christianity. And a lot of times when we go into churches, we go in with looking for how perfect it is instead of how we can serve. And she talked about bringing the expectation of fruitfulness. You be that fruit. So, and I'm not, and she's not talking about staying in unhealthy, narcissistic church environments where it is completely evidently toxic. That's just like telling someone to stay in an abusive marriage, right? Sometimes you do need to leave the congregation. Sometimes you do need to move on. Sometimes it is time. Sometimes you no longer serve each other and you stum become stumbling blocks for each other. And so sometimes there is times that you need to go. God calls you somewhere else or out, right? Um, but she did talk about like bringing fruitfulness to wherever you go. Bring the spirit of the Lord where you go. Be the kind person that says hello to everybody. You know, how can you serve? How can you help? Be the pattern, pattern yourself after Jesus when you walk into fellowship. Instead of coming with the expectation to receive, come with the expectation to usher in the spirit of the Lord. Does that make sense? So I really liked how she, how she talked about that because I think it's very easy to become a consumer Christian where it's about your preferences and what you like and how perfect and, you know, and all of that stuff. We're not going to find any perfect ministry. Ever, because it's ran by people, although led by the Spirit of God, it's still ran by people who are healing, right? And so I just put here that we are the stained glass windows of the church. God takes our broken pieces as, as, pieces, as, pieces 
and fits them together and his light shines through our brokenness to the world. So there's beauty in our brokenness. And instead of hiding our brokenness, we need to let God expose it, fit it together within the construct of the family of God so that his light can shine through our imperfection, his perfection shines through. So anyways, I just put, I currently I am healing and allowing God to soften my heart towards the church, a.k.a. the church structure. Thank you. And ironically, as God is softening my heart towards the church, he's also softening my heart towards myself. I realize now why we are perfected in Christ. The church is not perfect, but maturing in that perfection. The church is full of broken people becoming whole, just like myself. You're just like I. We are covered by his grace and by his perfection. In our weakness and in our brokenness, his perfection shines through. It's important to me for, it's important for me, for anybody that I've been a part of, to know that even if I may not still be a part of them, I still love them and am for them, even if I've been called from that current, that local congregation. I see that my call from the congregation I was a part of was because we became stumbling blocks for one another in each other's growth. I don't know if it would be wise for me to go back there as a member, but I'm always happy to visit as a sibling. It's important to be patient, forgiving, and understanding. Um, but it's also important to protect and guard your heart and follow Christ over man without throwing his bride, the church, out like unredeemable garbage. No local congregation will check all the boxes, just like I won't. But my eyes are fixed. Excuse me, Ray Ray, I'm busy. You need to wait. Go. Uh, what? I'll bring you oatmeal or you need to wait for lunch. That's what I told you. Go sit down. Um, no local congregation will check all the boxes, just like I won't check all the boxes as an individual person. Um, but my eyes are, our eyes and my eyes are to be fixed on Jesus, not on the flaws or the hysteria that often finds itself within the church. I trust God is at the threshing floor and that God is more than able to expose the areas within the church that are in need of correction as a loving father would. It's his job, not mine. My job is to allow him to reveal those areas within me and my own heart so that as I get better, as I heal, as I become more whole, so does the church. So my healing personally in an individual relationship with God pours over to the healing of the church collectively. So if each of us engage in that personal relationship with God vertically, it's going to pour over into the horizontal, the horizontal culture of the church. And so I think what God showed me today was that if I look at the local, the church as a whole and I am not happy with what I see, what's happening within the church is often a reflection of what's happening with us individually because we are the church collectively, right? And so as we heal, as we get closer to God, as we learn to walk in obedience and in step with the Holy Spirit and we learn to be more forgiving and full of grace, with ourselves, we're able to do that within the church and the church gets healthier as we get healthier. We expect the church to make us healthy when it's us who makes the church healthy. So um, it's, it's a partnership and not a solo act. My absence from the body of Christ hurts or handicaps it, handicaps it like a missing limb would handicap the physical body. The body needs me and I need them as a limb separate from the body will eventually die as it's cut off from the life-sustaining system. The church is the life-sustaining system of the believer. And so when we're cut off, we can only sustain life for so long before that limb dies because there's no blood flow, right? There's no exchange. There's no connectivity. And so healing comes from connection as the body fights disease, a.k.a. sin, as a unified unit the body can adjust and function without my part being attached but it's stronger if i am in place and even stronger and more effective when i am healed and whole so the body can lose a limb it will adjust but it will oh it'll be handicapped right but if that limb is in place and even more if that limb is healed the body can move and function healthy i may not favor the foot but the body needs the foot. And so even if I don't like the foot, I need the foot. <laughs> so we're not going to love everybody. and We're not going to 
naturally, I will love them, but we're not going to be in favor of everybody who's in the body of Christ. We're not, not everybody's going to be your best friend. You're, some people are going to get on your nerves, right? So that's what I'm saying. I may not favor the foot, but the body needs the foot. And if God says the foot is needed, who am I to say, I can't stand that foot, I'm having nothing to do with it. Um, so we are to pray and encourage and edify and correct so that the wounded toxic parts of the body may heal as a benefit for the whole. Not cut it off. It's not our job to cut off. That's God's job. Autonomy really does hurt the body. And I used to think, you do have autonomy as a believer, meaning you should think for yourself. You should study. Well, you shouldn't think for yourself. You should study to show yourself approved, allowing your mind to be renewed by the word of God. That's all of our jobs. I'm, what I'm meaning is we should study to show ourselves approved and we should be discerning. So we do have autonomy in the sense that we don't just believe ignorantly. God says take every thought captive. Make sure it lines up with the word of God. But autonomy in the sense that you see yourself separate from the body hurts the body of Christ. Because I am not, the foot is not separate from the body. The foot is connected to the body. And so we don't need autonomy. We don't need to be autonomous in the body of Christ. We need to be unanimous, meaning that we are unanimously functioning in one mind under one spirit with one goal in mind and that's to build the church hold on let me grab my son Okay, sorry about that. He was getting fuzzy. Okay. Um, okay. So with one goal in mind, which is to build the church so that more of the body is made, so the body is made complete. Um, hope is made complete and hope and healing, deliverance and purpose are passed on to one another as we encourage one another to remain in the faith or to become a part of the faith. Um, until Christ return or we are returned to him if we should pass away. The beauty of brokenness is with the support of the body and love and healing of the Lord, his light shines through our stained glass windows. So those broken pieces, God fits together. That's called our testimony. That's our walking ministry. That's our walking sermon, right? And his light shines through our brokenness because it's through our brokenness we relate with one another. It's through our brokenness that we realize I need a savior, and we need the body of Christ for us to heal. He puts us in a family so that we can support each other, right? So literally, our imperfections becomes a beautiful reflection of his perfection shining through us. He can use anyone, no matter how broken or how shattered. His, he's close to the broken hearted, the Bible says. He binds up their wounds. So God is very close to his bride, the church. Come on, baby. You say hello. What you fussy for? Oh. Um, the brokenness is us. The broken pieces is us. The binding is the family of God. He fits us jointly together, the scripture says in Ephesians, of God. We are each other's healing, and that is attractive to a hurting world. What's not attractive is the facade that we are not hurting or broken and that we have it all together and are perfect. None is perfect but him. Um, so our healing is what's attractive to a hurting world, not our perfection or not our perfection. Our transparency that shows the power of God's light shining through our broken pieces and creating a masterpiece in us individually, but fitted together collectively. And that's why we need each other. That's why the body of Christ is essential. That's why the bride of Christ is dearly loved by God. And I believe that God wants us to learn how to be more transparent. And not perfect, but perfected by him daily and to share our brokenness with a hurting world because the world is turned off by us because we present ourselves as perfect and we're not only he is perfect so i just wanted to share that with you guys 
um, there's beauty in the broken pieces. And the church is as perfect, imperfectly perfect as you are. And if you understand that, as an ind- like God still loves me and my imperfections, then we ought to still love each other for our imperfections and our brokenness, whether that be broken doctrine, you know, sometimes we mistreat each other. We have to be patient and forgiving and have those hard conversations and go to one another and deal with the sin so that it may be exposed and corrected and forgive each other and keep moving forward as a unit, as a family, not quit on each other because God doesn't quit on us. All right, guys, I just wanted to share that with you. I think I need to feed my little guy because he's fussing. He's fussing. Mm, look at that lippy. Okay, let me go. Let me take care of him. All right, you guys, have a blessed day. Well, let me pray really quick. <clears throat> Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you so much that you are a God of broken people. We thank you so much, Lord, that everything we are in need of, you are the fulfillment of that. You are the perfection. You are what's whole. You are our healing and our deliverance. And so in our brokenness, we find comfort and healing and hope in you. And we also find it in one another as a family. Aww. I pray for everybody who's watching this video today that they would embrace their brokenness and give the pieces to you, that you may put them together and make a beautiful masterpiece, testimony before the world of the goodness of God. Help us as the body of Christ to heal and deal with the places within our fellowships that are broken. Let us not be prideful but humble, that we may become more whole, that we may become more healed and function more in unity. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, bye.